more, uh, few more signs on the way in would have been good. Jeez. <laughs> Every four feet. It's over here. <laughs> it's like 80 miles out. Blow it out this way. <laughs> Bang a left right here. Oh my God, is it over, Summer? Let's ship them back to school. <laughs> All you kids that are here, no offense, but get out of here. <laughs> back to school, baby. My 10-year-old, he went August 1st this year. And they didn't start school. I just paid a friend of mine to pick him up in a bus every morning. <laughs> Hey, how was school? Not, we just drove around all day, Dad. <laughs> Did you know Uncle Mike was a bus driver? I didn't know that. <laughs> Took him supply shopping the other day. That's, uh, that's getting out of control. Remember when we were kids, it was a, you had a trapper keeper? It trapped and it kept, that was it. One notebook, it wasn't. My nine-year-old needed 14 glue sticks. I'm like, what, do you got a meth lab in your class? <laughs> had to get him a lunchbox. That's getting out of control. We had a brown bag, remember? A brown bag, you had a bruised up apple. Your mother, get on the bus. That's all you got. I don't care. She wasn't sitting there going, does he have enough protein? I don't know. Right, we had just a brown bag, you get on the bus, the bag would rip the, the apple would rip the bag, roll forward, get stuck under the bus driver's foot. He's like, we're going down. <laughs> no, now he's got a 97 gallon LL Bean cooler. My wife's like, I, it folds into a hammock at noon. <laughs> My wife's like, I put five ice packs in, you think that's enough? Jeez, I don't know. We transporting a hot? What the hell's in there? <laughs> oh my god, in the summer! Started off awful with that stupid royal wedding. <laughs> every day on that Today Show. I hate that Today Show. I watch it every morning. <laughs> that sucked up six weeks of our life, that stupid royal wedding. We don't even live over there. Every morning. Bah, bah, bah. Hello, everybody. I'm Kubota and Sabota or whatever. <laughs> that lady on the Today's show is named after a tractor. <laughs> we go now live to our very own Kiss Simmons in England. That's right. Thank you, um, Kubota and Sabota. <laughs> This is where the road where Prince Harry might be walking in five weeks. <laughs> Let's get down and smell the ground to see if we can smell any Prince Harry feet down here at all. Now I'm going to dry hop the ground where Prince Harry... <laughs> Uh, Kierce, Kierce, we're, we have a, we're breaking news right now. Yes, go ahead. Um, all of Hawaii is gone. Back to you. <laughs> Remember that? Yes. There's lava coming over the hill. People are running. <laughs> this is the teacup that Prince Harry might drink out of his boy. <laughs> oh my God. That thing came on, my wife was beside herself. She got sucked in hard. Bob, it's on, Bob! Oh my God, Bob, it's on, it's on! Do you want me to pause it? No! <laughs> you don't want to watch it? No, I would rather watch my mother take a dump. I ain't getting that. <laughs> She's getting out of the carriage, Bob. She's getting out of the carriage. Here's the other thing. Get a car if you own all of, of England. My God. And here they come now, past uh, Yorkshire pudding. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be to the castle in seven or eight days from now. <laughs> 
makes the assassination attempt pretty easy, doesn't it? <laughs> Take the horse out, they got nowhere to go. <laughs> My wife's like, I can't believe you don't want to watch this royal wedding, Bob. What's what? Who am I married? What is wrong with you anyway? I go, honey, listen, I don't want to sound like a dink or nothing. But the girl that's getting married there, Marky Mark, or whatever her name was, <laughs> Megan, Megan Markles, yeah, whatever. I go, her father's not going to the wedding. <laughs> I'm the dink here. <laughs> Remember that? That became a big thing, too. But who will walk nibbly dibbly down the aisle? <laughs> Will it be Prince Albert in a can, or who will it be? <laughs> I thought it'd be great if the church door just flew open, he's just standing there, he's like, yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Do I make you horny, baby? <laughs> if your kids are here and they know what that means, you're, then you're a horrible parent. <laughs> Because that should go right over their head. Call DHS. Get them all. Oh, my God. Just relax. I didn't want to do nothing, but my wife, she's at the point where she's got to go, 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 go. A lot of you guys that are here right now, you didn't want to be at this hoopla. Sitting on a horse track out here listening to some bozo. You got out of the shower, there were clothes on the bed. What's going on? We're going down to Blue Hill Fair to see that idiot. Oh, Jesus, here we go. She got us tickets a couple weeks ago to go see Jimmy Buffet over at Fenway Park. You know Jimmy Buffet? Buffet, all right, whatever. You ain't got to be on me that hard, dude. The guy with the Hawaiian shirt looks like he's struggling with life. $180 for a margarita, you know that guy? <laughs> We get over there, and first of all, we're in Boston, so I'm on freaking God, right? Anytime we leave the state of Maine, we are on God. We set a mental perimeter. I got it. You got it? I got that side. You got this side. I got my money. Do I got my money? I got my money. How you doing? Pretty good. My money's not right there. It ain't there. My wife's got her purse going through the boobs move that you girls do. You know, you string it through the boobs like they are like that, ma'am. <laughs> Just like, like, I got no one's getting to my cash, Teresa. Unless they rip a boob off of me or something. That just looks weird, girls. What are you doing? That'd be like if I just, if I just separated my nuts if I was like... <laughs> We got, we got a backup one on this one. Here we go. Is that better? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. That other one was like the big Walmart microphone. <laughs> clerk assistance to hardware. Clerk assistance to hardware. <laughs> Anyways, we're out in front of Fenway Park. We're standing there like a bunch of dubbers. I got my wife's uh, sweater on my arm like I'm ready for the nursing home or something. <laughs> <laughs> My wife goes, Bob, you got pockets? You bring pockets? Because all I brought was a clutch purse. A clutch? You're driving a stick? What the hell's that? <laughs> a clutch is a purse that don't carry nothing. Then why'd you bring it? <laughs> you got pockets, Bob? You got pockets? Yes, I got, because I know where she's going. Can you carry my foundation and my concrete, my eyeliner and my <laughs> lip liner, my boob liner? <laughs> My pants are up to here, look like MC Hammer or something. <laughs> I went through the metal detector. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> what do you got in there? I don't know. Got a bunch of stuff from Sephora. I'll run them all there. <laughs> Sephora, whatever. <laughs> We're sitting out there in front of Fenway Park and a limousine pulls up. Big black limousine like Julia Roberts and Pretty Girl, remember? 
<laughs> Pretty woman, all right, dude. <laughs> you ain't gonna win a car or nothing, Jesus. <laughs> Anyways, the window. <laughs> Give me some more of these, will you, bud? A little bit. The window comes down just like this, real slow. There's a guy who goes, Hey, you guys want to get in the limo and have a couple drinks? And my wife goes, Well, yeah. <laughs> I go, I don't like it. I don't like it. My spidey senses are telling me it ain't right. Oh, Bob, live a little. Get in the car and have a drink, Patty. Come on, what's wrong with you? I get in there, we sit down, it's just another guy and his wife. Just two of us, four of us in this car now. The guy looks right at us, he goes, So, uh, what are you guys into? I'm like, here we go. <laughs> My wife doesn't miss a beat. She looks right at him, she goes, I like to scrapbook. <laughs> He ain't talking about that. What's he talking about? He's a switcher, a swapper. What is it? Swinger. Swinger. How do you know? <laughs> you guys can't be swinging up here in Blue Hills. Only a thousand people that live here. Put your keys in a bowl, you end up going home with your sister. <laughs> You're going to the same house. What the hell? <laughs> Everybody had that joke. The show started. We get in Fenway Park. They whittled the seats in 1731 on the Mayflower. My kneecaps are acting as earmuffs for the guy in front of me. <laughs> the show starts. Everybody's standing up. They all got chairs. Sit down. <laughs> Some guy sashaying his fat locker across my eyebrow. <laughs> I don't know where I'm a gonna go when the ball came up those. <laughs> my wife's like, oh my god, I can smell the sausage he ate outside in the parking lot. He's <laughs> dripping out of his pores right on the armrest here, Bob. <laughs> what are we gonna do? I'm like, I don't know, I didn't even want to do this. <laughs> He's got a Hawaiian shirt on too, which, which is okay. The only time it ain't okay is you're getting off the plane coming back from Hawaii. Then you're just a dink. <laughs> You've seen those people get off the plane with that look from, hey, where did we just go? That's the only state you wear clothes back from, right? You don't come back from Alabama with overalls and cow manure on your shoes. <laughs> you don't come back from San Francisco dressed up like a cowboy or an Indian or a construction worker. <laughs> You don't come back from Fort Kent with no teeth holding a potato, making out with your sister. <laughs> I just want to stay home. Just want to stay home. Just want to watch TV. That's it. And I, I just want. To, I like sports. I like. The, I like. I'm a hockey guy. Hockey people. Where's the hockey people? <laughs> I like old hockey though, not this new hockey where you bump into somebody and they're like, all right, we got to get you a coloring book and a dog to pet. <laughs> I like old hockey. Remember old hockey? The guy's arm would be hanging off for half the game. He'd look at the referee. The referee would be like, I didn't even bring a whistle today, dude. Get back in there. <laughs> In 1979, that was old hockey, remember? The Boston Bruins climbed over the plexiglass in New York City and started beating people up from New York. <laughs> the whole team was in the stands beating people up from New York. Right, and the announcers weren't saying nothing like, oh, this is bad for the sport, I hope there's no kids watching. There was none of that PC stuff back then. This is what the announcers said from Boston. Well, the Bruins had no choice here, Fred. They had to go over the glass. <laughs> At one point, Mike Milbury had a guy's shoe off. He was beating him with it. And this is what they said. This is what they said. And Milbury's got his shoe off now. He's hitting him with it. That's going to hurt a man deep in his soul to be beaten by his own shoe. <laughs> They had a good team this year. They had one player, Brad Marchand, who's very good. You know Brad Marchand? But at the end of the year, started doing some weird stuff. He was, he was, he was, and if you don't know who he is, I'll fill you in. He was licking people on the other team. 
You know how the play stops and everybody talks smack? Oh, really, my mother? What about your sister? And then the guy would get close and he'd just go. Eh. <laughs> Even the referee was like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> Hey, look up licking. See if you think anything under licking. No, you gotta be shitting me. There ain't nothing under licking. Well, there's nothing under licking, but knock it off because it ain't right. <laughs> we went to a game this year, playoff game, whole family. My wife goes, we don't even have tickets, Bob. I go, it's fine. It's a Saturday playoff game. On a Saturday, we'll get good seats at a reasonable price from a guy on the street. $14,000 later. I'm sitting five rows from the top of the Boston Garden. You ever been up there? That's yep. a whole new world. You gotta walk by everybody to get up there. It's like you walk by the social classes. The first 20 rows of people from alligator sweaters on, like Bahaba, you know? Have you brought the Mercedes in to get the whaler checked for the Mako or the Saab? By the time we get to our seats, five rows from the top, there's people pissing on each other. <laughs> there was a lady having a baby up there. I ain't kidding you, it was like the bar in the Star Wars movie. <laughs> One guy's three seats over, had no ears, and his wife had a hairy chest. I'm not even being a dink right now. <laughs> I, just, I can't watch the game while that's going on. I gotta keep an eye on them. My wife goes, Bob, Bob. I go, what? She goes, keep it down. Well, he ain't gonna hear me. I think I saw that guy at Walmart up in Scarborough. A couple days ago, I go, I don't, I, what do you want me to do about it? She goes, what do you think he was doing there? I go, I don't know, probably not shopping for sunglasses. <laughs> Some of you laugh at that one on the ride home. <laughs> they pass out towels now at sporting events. Have you seen that? When people zip the towels around in the air, right? What's the first thing you think? You played high school sports, right, Bubba? Right, what's the first thing you think when you got a towel in your hand, right? You're gonna snap someone in the dink, right? <laughs> dink snapper. Every dude sitting on this horse track has thought the same thing. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna snap someone in the dink right now. And some of you girls thought the same thing too. So by all means, let's give 35,000 alcoholics from Boston their own towel. <laughs> The guy in front of me was the biggest guy I've ever seen. His back was like, it was huge. He couldn't zip his towel in his own area. Had to go full rotation. <laughs> it's hitting me in the face like a ceiling fan. And my 13 year old sitting next to me and his voice goes up and down because he, he doesn't got all the pubes yet. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> He's got the braces, his teeth are all separated. He's like, yeah, dad, yeah. What are you gonna do now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll take care of this SpongeBob. You worry about your own problem. <laughs> the whole game, slapping. The third period, my face. I look like Rocky Balboa. My face is up to him. I finally, I grab. He hit me again. I grab him by the wrist. I immediately regret my decision. <laughs> I could hear his neck turn around. He was like. <laughs> He goes, what's the matter? Nothing, I'm okay, I just pooped a little, that's all. <laughs> I got a towel, I'll clean myself up. <laughs> just stay, I like to watch it on TV too, but my wife runs a remote, my wife runs a clicker. She's in charge. You ever get that if you're married? I know, who, I know who's married here, I know who's single. I, the single guys are the ones that are smiling and leaning forward. <laughs> with drive, ambition, will to live. <laughs> All the married guys look like this right here. <laughs> I'm married, look at this shit, I'm only 18 years old. <laughs> <laughs> this 
what she says to me. Bob, you want to go upstairs and watch one of our shows tonight? Which basically means, Bob, we're going to go up and watch my show tonight. <laughs> she likes that Chip and Joanna. Any of you girls watch that? <laughs> On HGTV, where they rebuild the houses and the lady comes sashaying in and she goes, I want a stone fireplace over there. And he goes, absolutely, I'll get right on that. <laughs> It'll be built after the commercial. <laughs> my wife's like, oh my God, I love Chip. He's such a good guy and he just does whatever she says and it gets done right now. I got news for you, toots. Chip ain't doing nothing. <laughs> they go to commercial, he goes in the trailer, takes a dump, 70 guys come out and build a stone fireplace. That's how that works. <laughs> the other show she likes is My 600 Pound Life. Now, I don't know, I said, what's this show about? She goes, it's about people that weigh 600 pounds. I go, well, that ain't a show. That just sounds mean, don't it? Hey, yo, wicked fat, you want to show everybody? <laughs> she goes, watch five minutes of it and tell me you don't like it. I watch two minutes, I go, I don't like it. <laughs> They've been trying to get a guy off the couch for an hour and a half. Well, today we're going to get Jeffrey off the couch. He's like, no, you're not. <laughs> My ass is fused to the couch. Go get me five pounds of bacon and a gallon of Diet Coke. <laughs> and that doctor comes in, he's dumber than a bucket of hair. He's like, what is going on? <laughs> What's going on? He's eating too much. <laughs> Here's the other show, because we're becoming sickos, you understand? All you younger kids here, you don't know what's going on. Because we used to have shows that had a story, then they uh, close it up at the end. The, the guy wouldn't just stuck on the couch. That ain't a show. The other one she want, why they got to be naked and afraid? I mean, naked ain't enough for a sicko. If I told any of you guys 30 years ago, hey, tune in tonight on channel 12 at 8 o'clock. There's going to be a whole bunch of naked people. Your, re your response would not be, are they gonna be scared? <laughs> I like my naked people scared. <laughs> that show ain't right, that should be on TV. They blur the front out right here, but they leave that uh, pucker that mosquito ridden ass all showing. <laughs> I saw half of, half of my dad's left nut fell out of his shorts. <laughs> and that's still in my head right now. <laughs> my 10 year old has seen like 150 asses on that show. <laughs> they meet each other, they don't even look down. That's how you know it's fake right there. <laughs> When's the last time you stood with another person naked, you didn't look down and go, here we go. <laughs> They keep eye contact. Hi, I'm Steve. Hi, I'm Sheila. Right, come on. If that was me, I'd be going... Whoo. I'd probably do that a little bit. You ever do that in the mirror, bud? Yes, you have. Yes, you have. Every guy on this horse track has done it. You give a little whirly bird. You know? Girls over the boobs, too, you know you do. <laughs> you get a little bit older, you know. My wife's supposed to come up tonight, but she didn't make it up. She's supposed to be up tonight with another couple. We're supposed to go out with another couple tonight. You ever hang around with another couple that you secretly hate? But for some reason, you continue to hang out with them. Now, some of you are laughing, but guess what? A lot of you are here with that couple. <laughs> I can see it right from here. A lot of you guys are like... <laughs> <laughs> Stop hanging out with them. Life is short. Kick them to the curb. You know who you are. You'll drive home tonight, you'll talk badly about him the whole ride home. That guy's a jerk, I'll tell you that much. 
Why? What did he do? Trying to pick up the check. Trying to make me look bad. Like, I don't have a job. I don't got money. I know she's not nice either. Did you see what she did? What'd she do? I bet she did something. She ordered a salad right after I ordered a steak. So what? Now I'm fat? She's a bitch. You got that right. <laughs> He's a bitch with those big fake boobs there, I'll tell you that much. What did you just say? I don't know, what did I say? <laughs> big fake boobs, you like them, Bob? No, I don't like them. You must like them. You keep talking about those big fake boobs. I don't like them. I like those little saggy, flappy ones you got. <laughs> ones that fall out of your arms when we make love. <laughs> and I can tie into a balloon animal. <laughs> We had another couple come up to camp this summer from New York. I never met the husband. My wife goes, you're gonna love Todd. I go, well, if his name's Todd, I probably ain't gonna like him. <laughs> I'm not saying you're a dink if your name is Todd, but there's a 99% chance you're a dink. <laughs> he pulled into the driveway with a Volvo and a kayak on the roof. I looked at my wife, I said, I'm tapping out right now. <laughs> he got out of the car with no shirt on. Who's driving from New York with no shirt? I couldn't drive from here to the end of the exit over here or without my man boobs ripping the seatbelt off. <laughs> he got out, he's all ripped, he got abdominal muscles. Ladies, looky, looky, let's see, let's see. If you're married and your husband has stomach muscles, he's cheating on you. <laughs> You don't get married so you work out. You get married so you look like this right here. Oh my God, this guy was relentless. He was up at five o'clock in the morning knocking on the door. Hey Bob, you awake? Yeah, I am now, Todd. I had to get up to answer some stupid questions, I'm assuming. <laughs> I just ran 10 miles, had a power bar, did a thousand crunches. What do you say we start our day with some kayaking? Oh my God, that's tempting, Todd, jeez. <laughs> Let me shake off those 23 beers I drank last night. <laughs> Whoop, I got a better idea. Let's find a dirty pair of pliers. I'll rip out all my teeth and then suck on a lemon. <laughs> that sounds equally as entertaining as, as kayaking. Kayaking sucks hard. It's a floating casket. That's the worst vessel ever created. <laughs> that and the canoe sucks too. If you're here and you like a canoe, guess what you ain't got? Enough money for a motor. <laughs> You ever get in the canoe with a lazy person? My wife's behind me, I'm up front busting ass. Ah! I turn around, not only is she not paddling, but her paddle is in the water, giving more resistance to the situation. This is awesome. Bring me over there, Bob. Yep, you gotta paddle too, Pocahontas. Pick up the pace. The only boat that sucks worse than the kayak of the canoe is this boat. This boat sucks. <laughs> Who invented that? Hey, I'd like to get across the lake in 14 hours. <laughs> then be too tired to get back. That'd be good. Do you ever get in a pedal boat with your friend that's a little heavier than you are? Your side's in the air. <laughs> Pedal. I am pedaling, but you couldn't back off the Twinkies chunk around it. <laughs> Just over here doing Brody's in the cove. <laughs> you do whatever she says when you're married, you understand? All you little fellas here, looky, looky, listy, listy. <laughs> Once you get married, you just do what your wife says. That's it. You do what she says, and then you die first. Them are the rules. <laughs> Here's how you know you're almost dead if you're a guy here and you're a little bit older. If your wife is doing crossword puzzles and Sudoku's, you are almost dead. Because she saw her online. She saw her online somewhere. That keeps your mind sharp. Then she looked at you and went, this guy ain't gonna be around much longer. You see him out to the Bangor Mall, walking circles. I gotta get in shape. I got a whole life ahead of me once this asshole goes. You do what she says and you never ever give her the first answer that pops into your head. 
First answers are divorce answers. I'm gonna give you an example for all you guys that ain't married yet. Uh, looky, looky, let's see, let's see. Hey, Bob, you wanna watch Dancing with the Stars tonight? And you gotta think right there. You can't be saying what you're thinking. Uh, well, if you do, I do, I'll tell you that much. I just wanna spend time with you. I don't care what we do. And I'm not sure, but it looks like you lost 10 pounds in your ass. <laughs> That's my second answer. Don't ever say the first answer. You want to watch Dancing with the Stars? I think I'd rather go down in the cellar and sandpaper my eyeballs. <laughs> Take a low grade 40 and an orbital and bring them down to the retina. <laughs> That'd be the part where she'd look at me and go, mm -hmm. That's my wife's voice for me, by the way. You ladies got a voice for your husband when you're at work with your friends? I see you laughing. You're at work, you're like, anyway. Then he was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Your husband does not talk like that. And if you think he does, why would you have married a guy that talks like that? <laughs> this is my husband, Phil. Hi, my name's Phil. <laughs> Do you want chicken or fish? Phil wants fish. I like fish. <laughs> Why is Phil and my wife Debbie? <laughs> my wife knows everything. I don't know nothing. The older I get, the longer we've been married, she, she increases intelligence and I just go downhill. <laughs> she don't even know I'm here right now, by the way. I told her I was taking the trash out. <laughs> The longer you get married, you get out of the house for any reason. You ever spend an extra half hour in the Hannaford parking lot? Not because you hate your family, just because you don't want to go home right yet. I don't even know where my socks are unless I ask my wife. I gotta ask her, where are my socks? They're in the sock drawer. Okay, thank you. It's time to go to bed. Okay. That's not your side. Okay. It's time to eat. Okay. Can I have power tools? I can build stuff. My wife's like, oh, really? Meet Kevin. <laughs> and you gotta go in the room. That's how they show you who's who. There's a lot of older guys here. You know who you are. You're my heroes. You're the ones that never even went into the hospital. Remember? You know who you are. Right? I think my water broke. I'm going down to the bar. <laughs> Let me know when it works out. A day later. It's a boy. Drinks for everyone. When are you coming home, Ray? I'll be home when I please. Not now. You gotta go in the room with him. You and you have to go sign up at the YWCA for a, uh, a Pontiac Le Mans class. <laughs> it's a class where you learn how to tell your wife to do what? Anyone? Breathe. breathe. Yeah, breathe like she don't know how to breathe. <laughs> She's making people. <laughs> Can we look a little more like an idiot? You girls put that together. <laughs> you had a meeting about that. Okay, we're gonna make people. What could make him look a little more like an asshole while we're doing that? <laughs> What if he stands next to our head and tells us to breathe? Oh my God, I like it. That's really good. <laughs> and he does. He stands up there like an idiot. Breathe! Breathe! Nobody wants you in there. The nurses are looking over at you. That's him over there. He's the dirty animal that puts up where it didn't belong. That's why we're all here. You stay up by the head, you understand, little fella? Stay up by the head. You don't stop wandering around the room, you'll be very insecure about your manhood later on, you understand? <laughs> my second kid, my first boy, we had a Japanese doctor, and he was down in the, in the nether region checking out the situation south of the border, you know what I mean? If your kid gets that, again, you're a bad parent. <laughs> At one point, he popped his head up between my wife's legs, he went, oh! <laughs> Could you not do that? <laughs> it looks like I just had a 48-year-old Japanese baby. <laughs> and he was, <laughs> he 
yelling at my wife, God push hala and hala and hala. And I don't know why my Japanese guy sounds like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I don't know why. <laughs> push hala, get to the chopper, go! I go, my wife's wicked good pusher. I don't know what's going on here. But we had to go in for emergency C-section. And the kid came out, he was supposed to be seven pounds, he was 12'5". Yeah, I know, he walked out. He was smoking, he had a tattoo right here. Hey dad, you got the keys to the truck? I wanna go down to Old Orchard Beach. We got three kids. We got, we got a girl who's awesome, easy peasy, sweetheart, and then I got two boys, Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> All they do is fight. You can't do what our parents used to do. When we used to fight, we'd fight once or twice a year. My father would get, line us up and kick us right, whoa, whoa, right between the him and the ha. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you'd grab your, you'd go, ah! And my, and my dad would go, you want another one? What kid would agree to that? <laughs> Jeez, do I ever. Hey, do me a favor, get a run and start that. Go for it. <laughs> get about 50 yards out and see what you can do. Really, really come at me on this time. Now you gotta put him in timeout, which is ridiculous. You know what timeout is? A recharging station. <laughs> You're basically saying to them, geez, you've been fighting for quite a while now. What do you say you have a seat on the stairs over here and build up some angst? <laughs> I'll get you some water and you can strategize how to really beat the crap out of your brother. <laughs> okay, the minute's up. Ding, ding, ding. Get back in there. <laughs> and you don't have kids yet, so you don't know nothing, little fella. You ever go to the bathroom when you want to? Yeah, you just go, right? Guess what you can't do when you have kids? You can't take a dump whenever you want to. I go in there and hide, though. I'll hide. I get in the bathroom, I'm sitting in there. My wife's at the mall the other day with my daughter. I, this is all I hear from outside. Ow! <laughs> then I hear nothing. Then I hear footsteps in the big one, usually guilty. Dad? Yeah? Are you in there? No, I'm throwing my voice from the refrigerator. <laughs> When are you coming out? I don't know, dude. I'm on Facebook right now. My legs are numb. <laughs> you ever get on the shitter and you get on Facebook, you don't even know what you're looking at? <laughs> Got that big ring from the toilet seat under your ass? <laughs> get up, you, you can't even walk. Your legs are all numb. <laughs> you okay? Yeah, I was good. I was just on Facebook for a couple hours. <laughs> That, that YouTube, that'll suck a day out of ya. I went on yesterday, how to change the oil in a riding lawnmower. 14 hours later, I'm like, look at this naked guy riding a llama. <laughs> you ever want to know what a weirdo you are? Click on the history and see what brought you there. You'll go seek counseling right away. But now it's a different world. Oh my God, these kids. The other day, my son goes, Dad, we want to watch Stephen King's movie, It, tonight. Can we watch that? I go, I don't know. I don't know nothing about it. My wife goes, I don't know. I'm not sure what it is. If you haven't seen Stephen King's movie, It, it's about a clown that lives in the sewer and he kills people, which is probably not a family entertainment, but whatever. He kills children. Well, them are people, aren't they? All right, have a seat. There's no need to be at the barrier yelling shit. We got a rogue one over here. She's taking your job, dude. Get her. <laughs> the clown lives in the sewer. Put it this way, Stephen King wasn't taking multivitamins when he wrote that 40 years ago. He must have been, wow! So we're watching it, and the clown comes up out of the sewer, and the kid goes, he goes, come here, Georgie, come here. And the kid goes, yeah, okay, coming right over. <laughs> My kid's like, Dad, why is he going over there? Because <laughs> if he doesn't, we don't have a movie, dude. <laughs> you think clowns would kill people, Dad? Do you think that? You think wouldn't shut up the whole movie? Do you think a clown would kill me? I don't know, dude. I said, John Wayne Gacy did a pretty good job. He goes, who is John Wayne Gacy? I go, never mind. I'll save for bedtime. 
You don't know who John Wayne Gacy is, do you, little fella? No, Uncle Bobby's gonna tell you. <laughs> My kid's going to bed, he goes, tell me who John Wayne Gacy was. <laughs> I don't want to tell you before you go to bed. He goes, I'm almost a man. <laughs> I go, all right, he was a professional clown, and in his spare time, he managed to kill 57 people. Sleep tight. <laughs> Three o'clock that morning, the kid comes in our room. He's 13, he's six feet tall, he's 150 pounds, second degree black belt in karate. He comes in, he goes, can I sleep with you guys? <laughs> no, you can't, Chuck Norris, you can't. <laughs> Now go back to your room, he's under your bed. What? <laughs> I said go back to your room and go to bed. That's not what you said! <laughs> he was scared all night. My wife always hears noises in the middle of the night. She woke me up the night, she goes, Bob, Bob. I go, ah, ooh, ah, ah, ah. She goes, what was that? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry I ain't waking up with perfect Queen's English. <laughs> I'm awake and ready to attend to you, dear. What's happening? <laughs> I think I heard the alarm system downstairs. Go down and see who it is. I'm like, yeah, I don't care anymore. Let them be in the house. <laughs> we got three kids, two would be fine. <laughs> Go down there, Bob. See, oh, I'm sure they'll run the other way when they see this monstrosity coming at them. <laughs> <laughs> so I start putting my pants on. She goes, what are you doing? You don't have time for pants. I don't want to get beat up naked. I don't want my nuts flying over a chandelier. That's an exaggeration, whatever. So I'm halfway down the stairs now, but I'm kind of awake. You ever get paranoid in your own house? Start throwing karate chops around the corner? You start saying stuff, giving you a chance, opportunity to get out, now's the time. I get down there, I realize it's not the alarm system, it's a smoke detector, but I don't know which one it is. You ever play that game at three in the morning? Standing in the kitchen in your underwear, staring at the ceiling? They took the broom and knocked them all down, all of them. <laughs> 14 of them just hanging like this. I go back upstairs, she goes, was there anybody down there? Oh, geez, yeah, there was like six or seven guys. I took care of them quietly, you know? I used my Navy SEAL training. I hit one guy with a Japanese star I keep in my underwear. <laughs> no, there's nobody down there. You would have heard me. I would have been. <laughs> what was it? It was a smoke detector. Did you fix it? No, I didn't fix it. Why not? Because I didn't have a 19 foot ladder and 48 and 9 volt batteries up my shutter. <laughs> Tomorrow's a big day, right? We got a big weekend ahead of us and we're having the barbecues and all. My mother's coming over tomorrow. And I love my mother, but I think I'm pretty much done with her at this point. <laughs> She lives two miles down the street. I call her house the Irish Catholic Guilt Distribution Center. I bought a plow for my pickup truck last year. Ladies, remain seated. It ain't a yellow one either. Stainless steel, V plow. Every time it snows, I drive by Dunkin' Donuts real slow and I flare the wings for the ladies that work in there. Teresa, Bob's here, he's flaring the wings. <laughs> Last winter, my mother calls me before every storm, word for word on the phone, I ain't making none of this up. Are you gonna come over and plow me tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> well, first I'm gonna throw up in my own mouth. <laughs> no, cause I really need to be plowed, Bobby. <laughs> I might need to be plowed twice, once tonight and once in the morning. If you can't do it, can you send one of your friends over to plow me? I heard Mike does a good job. He plowed my friend Beverly and that is all she talks about. She said he didn't tear up her lawn and pushed it all the way to the back. 
I don't like it all the way to the back, Bobby. I like it nice and tight up against my bush. I don't want to get no emails either. Don't be emailing me. My kid was there and that wasn't right. Don't be emailing me. They should not know what I just talked about. My mother's at the age where it's all medical talk. That's all she talks about now. Oh, did you hear the checking Uncle Richard's testicle out Friday? That's awesome, Mom. Did you hear that? Kids and all the little kids? Why'd you bring that up, Mom? I'm letting you know he's going to be down one for the holidays. <laughs> oh, he's going to be down one forever. <laughs> that ain't a toenail, Mom. That's not growing back. <laughs> not unless he's got a pest dispenser strapped to his crotch. <laughs> Well, I'm letting you know for when you see him. For when I see him, what? Like Nest Mouse balances? <laughs> hey, Richard, you must have a lot of room in this pocket for quarters. <laughs> Probably play ski ball all day long down at Old Orchard. <laughs> My mother had a birthday a couple, couple weeks back. She goes, calls me up, she goes, I want to go to Ireland for my birthday. You do, Ma? Well, okay. I'd like to sleep with all the girls on The Price is Right. <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> We're going to Ireland, Ma. I'm working at the, on the fairgrounds on Saturday, and last night I was at the clam bank at an Old Orchard Beach. I'm not rolling with island money in here. <laughs> well, I'd like to do it. If not, I'll go on a pontoon boat. She wanted to go on a pontoon boat in Naples, Maine on Long Lake. It's 12 miles long. You have been over there? 12 miles long. She goes, I'd love to do that. So when I went over, I rented a 25 horsepower engine. And we get on there, me, my wife, and my kids, and my mother, and my sister, who lives with my mother, and she's 52. <laughs> Irish girl, doesn't mind a few starters in the morning. <laughs> That'll give you the full scope of where she's at, right there. <laughs> this is what my sister always says to me, Bobby, do you got any idea at all why I live with my... And in my head, I'm like, I think it's because you ain't got a job or a car. <laughs> So we set sail. Well, we don't set sail. That sounds like a dink move. We push off. And we're about eight miles down the lake. My sister's tipping them back hard, right? She comes over and she goes, Bobby, Ma ain't gonna make this boat ride. I go, with me, she's gonna jump ship, or what's going on? <laughs> no, she's got wicked bad IBS. She didn't tell you that? Do you know what IBS is, little fella? Well, <laughs> now it's time to learn. <laughs> IBS is irritable bowel syndrome. And that means, um, oh, I'm gonna poop my pants. I don't know when, oops, I think I just did. My mother's got white capris pants on. I can't have her drop a deuce in her white capris pants. I ain't making this up. There's no way you leave here and don't feel better about your own family. <laughs> I'm not up here because everything's okay, you understand? I had to pull into somebody's dock and knock on the camp door and go, how you doing? Um, you don't know me, but could my mother take a dump at your place? <laughs> Only in Maine, the guy goes, yeah, come on in. <laughs> If it's yellow, if it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, put it down, Bobby. That's not even the weirdest part of the story. As we're walking up the dock, my mother goes, don't tell them this is an emergency. <laughs> what the hell am I supposed to tell them? <laughs> Hi, my mother's always wanted to drop a deuce at your place. <laughs> it's on her bucket list every time we drive by. She's like, oh, if I could just shit over there, that'd be good. <laughs> We brought my mother to Disney World, and I love my mother. But listen, if you're going to take your, your mother to Disney World with your kids, that, that ain't going to add up. You understand? You'd be better off to chew some broken glass and stand on 95 South and wait for a Peterbilt to hit you. <laughs> we get down there. This is my mother's walking pace through Disney World, and we got three kids with us. Here's my mother. <laughs> and my kids are like, ah! <laughs> I'm like, Ma, you gotta pick the pace up. We wanna get halfway through the park before Christmas. I love the horticulture, Bobby. No, I don't even know what that means. All the shrubs, they cut them so they look like little Disney characters. Yeah, just get on the monorail, Ma, before I have a heart attack. 
We get on the monorail, it's packed very loudly. I ain't making this up, this is what she says. When we get home, I'm gonna trim my bush like Goofy. <laughs> There's another guy in the monorail just looking at me going, it's gonna be a long week, huh? <laughs> All right, listen, I hope we made you guys laugh tonight. I hope you had a lot of fun. <laughs> and, hey, one more quick thing. Hey, Eddie, Eddie, Ed, Ed, is that Eddie? Hey, Ed, Ed's a buddy of mine from high school. He's going through a tough time. We love you, man. Love I've been thinking about you. Give him a nice round of applause, Eddie. <laughs> Thank you guys, have a good night.